The exchange of chemical elements and compounds between organisms and their environment is referred to as a biogeochemical cycle in science. The carbon, nitrogen, and water cycles are the three main biogeocycles. In each cycle, organisms and the environment, which includes the atmosphere, soil, and ocean, modify in cycle the chemical element or molecule. The nitrogen cycle is one of these cycles, which we looked at in the last video. Please watch the video if you want to learn more. In this video, we will continue the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle is one of the biochemical cycles in which carbon is transferred between living organisms, soil, water, air, and land. The fourth most prevalent element in the universe is carbon. About 65,500 billion metric tons of the Earth's carbon are trapped in rocks. The remaining is found in the atmosphere, ocean, plants, soil, and fossil fuels. Carbon is the most important element to life. Without this element, life as we know it would not exist. A compound found mainly in living things is known as an organic compound. Organic compounds make up the cells and other structures of organisms and carry out life processes. Carbon is the main element in organic compounds, so carbon is essential to life on Earth. Carbon's ability to create stable bonds with numerous elements, including itself, is the explanation for this. This characteristic enables carbon to create a wide range of extremely massive and complicated compounds. In fact, living things include almost 10 million carbon-based molecules. However, there are only four primary categories of organic compounds, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Carbon dioxide, a compound of carbon and oxygen, is a colorless and non-flammable gas at normal temperature and pressure. As of May 2022, the worldwide average concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is 0.04% or 421 ppm. Carbon dioxide is a significant ingredient of our planet's air, while being far less prevalent than nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a major greenhouse gas that contributes to the trapping of heat in our atmosphere. Our world would be inhospitably cold without it. However, a rise in average global temperatures brought on by rising CO2 levels in our atmosphere is affecting various aspects of Earth's climate. The atmospheric concentration was close to 270 ppm prior to industrial activities. Thus, since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere has increased by around 40%, which has boosted the Earth's temperature. Carbon is always transferred from one area to another. It is stored in so-called reservoirs, and it is exchanged between these reservoirs by a number of processes, such as photosynthesis, burning of fossil fuels, and exhalation of air from the lungs. The transfer of carbon from reservoir to reservoir is called carbon cycle. The carbon cycle prevents all carbon on Earth from entering the atmosphere or being completely deposited in soil over the long run. This equilibrium aids in maintaining a steady temperature on Earth. The carbon cycle can be classified into slow and fast carbon cycle based on the time taken to complete one cycle. Through a series of chemical reactions and tectonic activity, carbon takes between 100 to 200 million years to move between the reservoirs. This series takes place in the slow carbon cycle. Rain starts the transfer of carbon from the atmosphere to the rocks, or lithosphere. A weak acid called carbonic acid is created when atmospheric carbon reacts with water and sinks to the surface. 
Carbonation is the name of the acid production process. Through a process known as chemical weathering, weak carbonic acid dissolves rock. By releasing calcium, magnesium, potassium, or sodium ions, this chemical weathering process modifies the chemical makeup of rocks. These ions are transported from the rocks to the ocean through rivers. Calcium carbonate is created in the ocean when bicarbonate ions combine with calcium ions. Shell-forming creatures like corals and plankton produce the majority of the calcium carbonate. When these organism dies, it sinks to the ocean floor. Carbon in the dead creatures is stored in stone called limestone and its derivatives. Currently, only 80% of carbon-containing rocks are created in this manner. The other 20% is made up of organic carbon, which is carbon that has been ingested by living creatures and entrenched in layers of mud. Over millions of years, heat and pressure compress the carbon and debris, creating sedimentary rock like shale. In rare circumstances, layers of organic carbon transform into oil, coal, or natural gas rather than decaying. Through volcanoes, a slow cycle restores carbon to the atmosphere. Many moving plates keep the Earth's land and ocean surfaces in balance. When these plates meet, one sinks beneath the other, causing the underlying plate-bearing rock to melt due to the intense heat and pressure. Carbon dioxide is produced and hot rock recombines with silicate minerals. When volcanoes erupt, they vent these gas to the atmosphere. This creates a cycle. This cycle is termed as the short carbon cycle. The fast carbon cycle is the transformation of carbon by Earth's living creatures. Carbon is vital in life because of its capacity to generate four bonds per atom. This capacity produces a wide range of complex organic compounds. Longer carbon chains have larger energy bonds. The stored energy is released when the chains break apart. Because of that energy, carbon molecules are an excellent energy supplier for all living things. Plants and phytoplankton are the primary components of the rapid carbon cycle. Plants and phytoplankton absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Plants and plankton use sunlight to combine carbon dioxide and water to produce carbohydrates and release oxygen. The carbohydrates are broken down by plants to provide the energy they require to thrive. Plants can also store carbohydrates. Plants are consumed by animals, including humans, who break down the carbohydrates to obtain energy. Bacteria consume and decompose plants and plankton towards the end of their lifespan. During each process, oxygen reacts with carbohydrates and produces water, carbon dioxide, and energy. Exhalation causes the release of carbon dioxide produced. The carbon dioxide produced during the process is typically discharged into the atmosphere. This results in a new cycle known as the short carbon cycle. The carbon cycle can be seen in the food we eat, the electricity we use in our homes, the gasoline in automobiles, and the weather. Because we are also part of the carbon cycle, our choices about how we live and how we protect the environment affect the cycle. Similarly, changes in the carbon cycle can have a huge impact on our lives.